All right, we'll get into our next movie here, South Mountain, written and directed by Hilary Broger. This movie premiered, also premiered at last year's South by Southwest Festival and is largely a reactionary piece set in upstate New York, though the setting in this film takes on a more naturalistic purpose, and I'll touch more on that later. It begins under very unsettling circumstances. It's a 4th of July celebration for the family, but one of them, the dad, played by Scott Cohen, is holding on to a secret that will destroy them. Not only has he been having an affair with another woman, but he got that woman pregnant. And not only did he get that woman pregnant, but the movie begins with Edgar, that's uh, that's the character's name, avoiding the festivities, like the 4th of July celebration, cowering into another room, and staying in there for several the several hours it takes for the uh, for the woman to give birth. Oof. These initial scenes are very raw, literally, and extremely graphic. I low key, I honestly, I think that was a real birth that I watched on the phone. It's like through his phone screen. Like I, there are angles and there are prosthetics that I just don't believe are real. <laughs> I I really do think that it, they convinced me if it wasn't. But um these scenes serve a purpose obviously not only to, like reveal uh the deception that's going on but and the betrayal that is beginning to manifest itself but it also signals that a conversation, you know, especially based on his interest and passion in the birth and the you know the birthing process the, a conversation is coming and you can tell that this is a unit of a family and it's going to be destroyed <laughs> and the mother leela played by uh talia balsam hosts uh ho she's going to be our main character and we start to get a sense of who she is and what the family is and like I said, they're a family unit, and it's probably because the mother hosts this organic environment. They live in a low-key house with, you know, it, it's a it's not a farmhouse, but it's sort of a farmhouse. Um, there are there are worn down wooden panels and a garden outside with mints and tomatoes and a whole bunch of stuff. The yard is surrounded by trees, so much so that it looks like they're living in their own little world. And I, I literally marked it down, the sixth to last shot. I don't think it's a reveal, per se, um, but I, the sixth to last shot of the movie reveals. I say it's not a reveal, and then I use the word reveals. <laughs> um, it shows us that they're actually living in a suburban neighborhood, which made that don't, like, which made that arena so much better and like so much it, it says so much more about the characters and who they are um and all around it seems like communication is a very important factor in this family which is obviously incredibly ironic since edgar has been cheating and it doesn't take to i mean that being said it doesn't take him too long after the birth for edgar to admit what he's done and subsequently break apart the marriage he decides to move in with the other woman and live in brooklyn and most of this film is dedicated to leela figuring out what to do now that her life and everything that she thought the rest of it was going to be is gone uh this dramatic midlife crisis premise you know um and middle-aged woman uh central figure is the second film i've seen like this in the last year and actually more specifically i i don't remember when i went to la I i'll ask you because you're one of my one of my good friends here <laughs> do you remember when i did that um no <laughs> I think it Okay, I mean we can piece this together. It had it was after Toronto, uh -huh. obviously, because I had seen the lighthouse. Right. So <clears throat> it was either November Okay, so I it's sometime in, in the last half year. Okay. Second movie I've seen like this in the last half year. Gotcha. The first one being Gloria Bell with Julianne Moore and John Turturro, which came out uh, that came out last sometime last year or the year before, but like I said, I, I saw it at the airport in los angeles <laughs> and now i i had my problems with gloria bell 
And I found that one of the most substantial differences between that and South Mountain was the fact that Gloria Bell was more external in its conflicts. I, it, it, it was more of a blend of external and internal. The characters would go on vacations and dates and do all of these things and they would rely on other people for their problems and like while they're while those interactions are not appropriate or inappropriate or annoying in any way they were sort of cliche they came off to me like they were sort of cliche this movie has a very very tad bit of that the closest leela ever comes to a cliche is hooking up with a much younger man and that is after we find out that this is the second time edgar has done this what the wait first- what <laughs> Yes. So they already have, uh, there's a daughter, like, um, they have an older daughter who she is very protective of. Um, the daughter has had problems with depression. So it's like, she's supposed to show up at the 4th of July, but she isn't answering her phone and the mom is really upset. It's like the mo- her phone says that she's still there, you know, very protective. But then you find out that she was that sam the daughter is literally another child from another affair <laughs> like they only have one child between them but now he has three kids Wild kind of situation so after you find out that this is the second time this has happened like they'd split up and they had gotten back together um her pain feels a little bit more justified and less cliche, you know, even though it's the same actions, you know, these, these feelings feel more, um, more natural, I guess. Does that make any sense? You know, it's, I, I, yeah, that makes sense to me. Yeah. So, but, but for the most part, uh, South mountain is internal and naturalistic. Like I was saying earlier with the setting, but it's very internal. Leela spends most, if not all of her time in this nature dome, like that is her house and the house and everything is just so fantastic. They even have a sauna. They have their own little sauna. That's like a little separate log cabin in the middle of like woods. (laughs) And it's awesome. But this, this stationary environment forces her to combat what's actually in front of her and thus within her rather than having an avenue to ignore what's happening or for us to be distracted by other things and that in my mind makes for a more interesting character and a more interesting story i also found her character overall to be incredibly intelligent despite you know like personally i have a really big problem with cheating uh it's i honestly do believe it's the worst thing you could do to another person and i sometimes and i don't know if this is a controversial take or anything but uh i I don't know how to feel when people get cheated on and then go back to the person who cheated on them you know and like but i guess it's different with marriage I, i i don't know it's really a touchy subject uh but despite how I feel about cheating and her being able to accept the daughter as, or the, I guess it's not a bastard child, is it? Um, I guess technically. Yeah. Out of wedlock, that's what we'll call yeah. it. The out of wedlock child, the one who, uh, you know, was produced out of an affair. I think... I, I could look past it. Like, I still saw her as an intelligent being. Because, like I said, usually I get distracted by that. And I am very judgmental and all of these things. But I found her very intelligent. And also largely in control of her feelings. Which is also a weird take. Because she does a lot of uh, not irrational things. But very eccentric and um spontaneous things so it's kind of she, there's one very specific scene where she acts like a very evil sour patch kid you know sour and then she's sweet you know fixes her own problems but anyway uh getting back to the main conversation here south south mountain as a movie deals with a lot of big picture issues you have deception you have cheating depression and vengeance but navigates through all of them with the insight of a wiser perspective 
not only is Leela a bit older than the women we're used to watching in breakup stories, like I, I couldn't imagine how the young women in Banana Split would handle this situation, <laughs> that, which we watched, which I watched last week. So not only do we have this bit. Um, this older perspective but she's also gone through this situation before the movie shares that perspective with her because this isn't like the first it's it feels like there's a more there's a lot of processing even though there's the shock of it happening again a lot of processing of the events has already happened so now we can dive into different fixtures of her depression and everything that's going on inside of her head that would otherwise be um that would otherwise be made or highlighted in a big movie or a, not a big movie or a, a a less intelligent movie would focus on uh those other feelings the the cliche elements of a midlife crisis if that makes any sense i can um, it's also, uh, like I said earlier, the location is very stationary. It, it, this is also obviously a performance vehicle. Balsam is, Balsam, I, I guess, Balsam is fantastic here, as is Cohen. And the two work together to conjure up some really dark energy. Edgar doesn't go away. You know, you get a sense that Edgar had left the last time and like was staying away but the mom got too depressed and he came back uh he doesn't go away here there are people who rely on their relationship they have family friends they have uh the daughter right not i mean they have their own daughter right but they also have Sam, the the daughter from the previous affair. Like, there are a lot of people that are relying on them. And he still shows up. You know, he's still very much a part of his life. And it's almost sort of vindictive because the pair or um, the daughters start... I don't want to... Like, you don't want to... You never want to describe these things as teaming up. You know, that, that sounds bad. But uh, it, it it almost feels like they're teaming up against him, but he doesn't go away. And they're all very protective of their mother, much like the the young girls in My Darling Vivian are protective of their mother. And he doesn't go away. But like when he's there, you get... Um, Leela displays this very unnerving collection of rage sexual tension depression neediness there's a lot going on in her face and she there are a couple of times where she lets something slip but it never a lot of the times in the most impressive scenes those don't manifest themselves that being said it's sort of slow um it like that's just how it is this is a <laughs> this is an intern it's in it's an internal struggle and we just got to deal with that uh i do want to shout out the cinematography by ethan mass like i said earlier um even though the set design or i guess i don't even know if you call it set design if that's just the way the land or the way this property was when they got there it's another skill entirely making it feel that awesome i feel like you don't notice how cool a set is unless it's shot well or shot beautifully and it, this is a very pretty movie <laughs> I, pretty i hate that i feel like pretty is just a weird word this movie's gonna cute use... to look at <laughs> yeah pretty much i'm gonna give it four out of five stars i, I like this one too it's good oh wait hold, one more point one more point sorry i forgot to write this note uh it's in my book but it's not in my <laughs> computer the movie cuts off um the like to the point where i was watching it and i was in the zone and it ended and i was like huh <laughs> i literally rewinded it because i'm like shoot did i miss something like was there a facial cue that i missed or was there like an event that i missed and no it, the movie just ends 
And, you know, like, obviously there's a clear argument that some revelation has been made and, you know, there's a peace of mind or whatever. Um, and I thought that it was going to be a criticism when I wrote that down. But as I was thinking about it, I think that I was not ready or I was more I was more prepared for a more natural film ending, you know, mm. A clear cut and dry finale but i was convinced of these lives and you know just like any visit to somebody's house you know those lives keep going after you drive away so it was initially a critique but it is now a compliment <laughs> so I, four out of five